Hi, this is Brian Wormers recording a lecture for the care of the patients with cancer for medical surgical nursing at the University of Sioux Falls. Um, this is going to be a very high level overview of this. Uh, we can really get into the weeds depending on the type of cancer, where it's at, um, you know, if it's skin cancer versus if it is breast cancer versus uh, liver cancer. I mean, they all have got a, a different feel and a different treatment of methodology, of course. But we're just going to take a very high level uh, overview of this. So we'll talk about some of the main nursing care that we have to do for those patients. We'll look at, you know, how to care for patients with neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. We'll talk about cancer treatment and side effects of cancer care. And then we'll talk about some of the psychological impact. So just as a quick review, these conse consequences of cancer with metastasis. Um, it can be any of the stuff depending on where it's at, what it's pushing on, what it's doing. And so that's the biggest thing is with any of this cancer, it's really going to be highly variable about where it's at and what it's pushing on and what it's doing. But realize it could cause uh, reduced immunity, especially with the new bone marrow and you know, you're getting suppression of the WBCs. You talk about, you know, reduced blood producing function. So if it's in the bone marrow again, we can talk about that maybe it's not making the RBCs. That leads into anemia and clotting. We can also talk about if it's in the bone barrel and it's impacting platelets, then guess what? You know, that's going to gonna impact those. Um, so we've got all these different types of things that can go on just with the bone marrow. We can talk about altered GI function, especially if it's getting pushed on, pooped on, or the tissue is being altered so it can absorb things as well. Motor and ses sensory deficits. Um, depending on where this is at, if it's up in the brain, it might impact hearing, vision, um, taste, all those different things. Um, within the bones, it might cause uh, pathological fractures, it might have decreased mobility, changes in level of consciousness. So, I mean, think about all these different places um, and what, why it would be bad to have a tumor there. Um, decreased respiratory response, once again, if it's in the respiratory system, or even if you've got a significant decreased level of consciousness in the brain, um, it can cause an impaired respiratory function. So, what do we do? So, surgery is one of the first things we can do with this, and it can be a couple of different things. So, we can do prophylactic surgery. If, you know, there's an area of your body that's prone to having cancer, and you remove that area of the body, then um, it's, it's tough to get cancer. Um, breast would be one of those. So, like Angelina Jolie elected to have breast reconstruction um, and breast removal bilaterally. Um, as prophylactic treatment for breast cancer. Um, it could be diagnostic, in which we're doing a biopsy to see what the cells are. It could be curative um, to try and you know, fix it. it. Could be palliative to try and make the things better, um, but not necessarily be curative at that point in time. Or it could be, um, more talking about cancer, it could be reconstructive. Maybe um, there was breast tissue there that had cancer in it. And then now we're doing reconstructive breast augmentation or breast uh, surgery to try and, um, you know, help that patient out. Patient-centered care. So we talk about medical, psychological, and it's going to involve lots of different healthcare team members. So radiation is one of the things that we can use with this. Uh, it's really trying to um, zap, so to speak, or, or impact those local tissues and not have systemic effects. Um, it's given in divided doses. It's trying to use it um, in lots of different ways with teletherapy. So it's outside the body and going through the body. And we kind of talked about that with um, stereoscopic type of situations. Uh, could be brachytherapy. So that's an implantable device inside the body. That's usually more of a nuke med. Um, and so with that, you know, the, the patient is um, a threat to others. Um, and, and what I mean by that is that they're radioactive and their secretions will be radioactive. And so we need to take precautions with that as nurses and even their family members have to be careful with that. So with any of these things, um, side effects could in, include altered taste, fatigue, bone marrow suppression, skin damage. Um, and kind of go from there. We do have anti-neoplastic medications. Chemotherapy is the one that everybody thinks about, but, you know, we can target some of these uh, cancer cells with hormone agents or um, immunological therapy. So there, there's different things that we can do, but chemo is what everybody kind of thinks about. 
So chemotherapy is meant to in interfere with cell division of those cancer cells. So that's why it's so important to know what it is, because then we know how long it takes for the cells to divide and when optimal times for giving medications will be. Um, might do combination therapy with a variety of anti-cancer drugs, um, but be aware that they are usually on a very specific schedule with this one. Uh, most of the chemotherapy is given via IV. Um, there are some, some outliers that are oral, uh, but this requires special care. So make sure that you are protecting yourself because, strangely enough, chemotherapy um, can cause cancer. So it's a carcinogen, which is ironic. Um, just like when you're talking about antiarrhythmics in the cardiac realm, they can cause arrhythmias too. So it, it's ironic how some of that works. But we want to be very careful with this for ourselves, for our patients, and especially with our patients, we do not want this to extrava, uh, extravasize. And so what that means is that it goes outside the vein into that tissue. Uh, if we think about what chemo is, it's meant to um, interfere with cell division. And so that tissue around there, it would be really friable then and really take a hit. And so if that's the case, call up pharmacy, call up the provider, get orders. You might be giving an antidote, might be doing surgery, might be doing other treatments, heat, cold, depending on what it is. Um, and how extensive things are. So oftentimes this is why we give central uh, chemotherapy uh, usually through like a central line, so at least a pick if not more. Side effects, anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, alopecia, um, irritation of your mouth, nausea and vomiting are all very common with chemotherapy and even some of these other meds. So planning and implementation of this, so risk for infection, especially if we're talking about bone marrow suppression. So we want to keep them free from this. So this could possibly be in uh, keeping their body clean, making sure that we're not cross-contaminating anything on their own person. Uh, we want to keep them free for other things from other people. So uh, stay away from people with coughs, colds, skin infections, things like that. And so we do, got, we do have to teach about education and do lots of signs and symptoms in regards to infection, what that may mean, especially if they're suppressed. Um, you know, they probably would not get a temple of like 102. They, they won't have the ability to raise that up. But for them, if it goes from, if they're usually at 98.1 and now they're running 99.1, that would be something the provider would want to know. But frequent cleaning, trying to prevent the own flora from getting infected. Uh, neutropenic precautions, so trying to protect them as well as possible. And so some of the things that we do is frequent hand washing. Sometimes we, we gown and mask and stuff like that to try and protect our patients um, from us. Sometimes that this will include um, no fresh flowers, no fresh fruit, or um, things that can't be scrubbed very well. Um, this might also be leading into stem cells and bone marrow, so if they are suppressed, then we try to fix that. Now, other things that we worry about, bleeding with bone marrow suppression. And so with that, we worry about you know, bleeding. So um, <laughs> we work on the complications thereof. So if we talk about platelet um, malformation or um, decreased numbers related to some of the medications that we're doing, we got to be very careful of that one. So education for signs and symptoms of bleeding, what they should do if they have bleeding, um, and, and realize that. Um, oxygen is not really for the bleeding, but this is more for your anemias and stuff like that. So realize that, that might be a situation. And then realize that administration of erythropoiesis uh, stimulating agents might be directed. So um, these bottom two are not for bleeding. Um, and these bottom two are for anemia and impact of the red blood cells. Um, Nausea and vomiting is very common with chemotherapy, depending on what type of chemotherapy you're giving. So oftentimes we want to provide them fluids and hydration, as well as we want to prevent the nausea and vomiting from occurring. So oftentimes we're given Zofran or other Kytril or other medications like that prior to giving chemotherapy, um, because if we can stay on top of it and prevent it, that's so much better than trying to play catch up. So nausea and vomiting and pain are both the same way. So think about that in your career and really be proactive with both of those. Um, it's easier to manage if you stay on top of it. So interventions, anti-emetic anti 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 therapy, um, like I mentioned, but starting that before, giving it during, even after the chemotherapy is received.
So mouth sores, um, very common. Um, and then of course that makes eating and drinking difficulty because it hurts. And so we want to prioritize good oral hygiene care. Um, we're always looking in their mouths, trying to uh, make sure that we don't see any breakdown. And if so, then we're going to work with that. We can do um, swish and spits or rinse and spits. Uh, so it's different medications that they can have. Um, and that can be, a, you know, every hospital's kind of got, got its own protocol, but something usually to coat, something usually to decrease inflammation like a Benadryl, and maybe even like a lidocaine to numb things up a little bit if there's a lot of pain. Um, alopecia, so they might have hair loss with this. Um, with that being said, if there's no hair on the top of their head and they're not used to that, make sure that they're wearing sun protection because they can get a wicked sunburn on the top of their head. And then, of course, heat and cold exposure is more significant if you don't have any hair up there. Be aware, um, an interesting fact is if they have alopecia from this, if their hair grows back in, it might grow in completely different than what it was. So if they were uh, brown hair and curly, it might come in as, as blonde and straight. So it, it's kind of interesting how that works. Um, and here is chemo-induced uh, peripheral neuropathy. This is bad um, because it, it hurts a lot. Uh, it impacts your, your nerves, and so with the discomfort and the pain, um, there's also a lot less uh, feeling, and so falls occur because they, they don't feel the ground underneath them, so to speak. Um, so with this one, we really want to prevent falls, do good hygiene, um, and have good shoes because they can't feel they're, they're at risk for these things and for skin breakdown. So emergencies, of course, it's sepsis. We're worried about infections and how that might spread throughout their body. We're worried about clotting disorders where it might be bleeding and clotting um, in different areas of the body. And we talked about this before, but it's really hard to treat. Um, we can talk about, you know, SIADH. So then uh, you've got some weight gain with this one and decrease your output. Um, so treatment, so food restrictions to make sure that they don't gain any more weight and di diuretics to help them pee. Can get hypercalcemia, especially like you get a lot of tissue breakdown, and we'll talk about this here coming up. Um, but realize that the cal calcemia uh, can occur with this one. And then tumor lysis syndrome. So if we were breaking down a lot of the tumor cells, we can get a lot of the byproducts from that. And so all those byproducts then get filtered through the kidney. So if you've got a lot of potassium, especially, that causes a lot of kidney damage. And so you gotta be very careful with that one. Um, I have known of some people that if they had a significant amount of cancer and then they were gonna give a med that was gonna uh, known to cause tumor lysis syndrome, um, they've even been put on like a dialysis or something like that beforehand to try and help out the kidneys um, and, and filter through a little bit better. So, um, signs and symptoms, so kidney pain once again, so nausea, vomiting, di uh, some diarrhea, flank pain, weakness, muscle cramps. Um, but mainstays of treatment would be hydration, antiemetics, um, and if there's any um, ways to neutralize some of the stuff, we, we do that as well. So that concludes um, this high, high level overview of uh, cancer planning or uh, patients with cancer. If you have any questions, please contact me.